phone. Just like my father or my dog. And the millions of dollars in the victim's family have not partaken in none of those crimes. You know, they took your money. Hundred percent way to survive jail or prison. Don't go. Until you credit up. Why you need credit? Then twelve years goes by and you don't even get a chance to go up for parole. Hey, shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. This is Living Life After Life podcast with Banky Pam and Troy Catch Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we have the man, the myth, the legend himself. The real Charleston White. What's up, brother? What's happening? What's, up? What's happening? Oh, man, y'all got it, man. Shit, it's taking it easy. Yeah, man, you damn Texas in the building. Texas is yeah, in the first time in VA. I got a lot of love. You definitely yeah. got a lot of yeah, love, yeah, man. You got a lot of love, love man. And, and, um, you know, that that's one thing. You know, you, you performed last night. You was out there on the stage, man. That was the first time I seen you perform. You know, I didn't know what to expect, man, but you, you you know, you killed it. You was a showstopper out there, man. It seemed like you was a natural, man. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, I'm freestyling. I I have a set uh, that, that me and, and Shorty Shorty, uh, the comedian, man, shout out to Shorty, uh, we went we went down over a set. So I have, like, like, 14 key bulletin points that if I stick with this set, I got a great comedy show. Uh, but b- because of the nervousness, uh, sometimes you forget. Last night was a lot easier because the crowd wasn't so up close. Right. Uh, but normally, man, when the crowd up close, man, you got this pretty woman sitting here looking at you. You got another pretty <laughs> woman sitting. Yeah. So you got all this. So, you know, you forget, man. And so uh, uh, I get lost in the set. And so uh, la- last night was difficult uh, because they took my crutch from me. So my props, uh, right. my, my weapons that I use as a, as props, uh, that's my crutch if I can't remember a, 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 a joke. I haven't learned how to tell jokes yet, so I'm just telling a story. So once I can remember my set, uh, once I can remember how to tell the jokes and, and incorporate the punchlines, uh, then then I then I done found myself as a comedian, so I'm still trying to find myself. Uh, so this is my 14th show, and, and I haven't done the same show twice yet. Oh, man. Wow. So look, we in VA live, and uh, you was telling the story for our audience, man. Tell us, tell us who is Charleston White. Tell us something about yourself. Oh, uh, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a black man who who grew up, in in, in what I like to explain, uh, your your typical traditional single parent African American home with just mama. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in an era where, where, where black mothers, and this is not to discredit today's mothers, uh, but we come from a, a black home where, for the most part, most of us was taught right from wrong yeah. and was taught wrong is wrong, yeah. uh, right is right. Yeah. Uh, if you do something wrong to somebody, you say, I'm sorry, you ask yeah. for forgiveness, uh, you pray over your food, uh, you don't put your elbows on the table mm. when you eat, mm. uh, you don't definitely. talk with food in your mouth, yeah. yes sir, yes ma'am, thank you. So I, I was taught uh, to, to have morals uh, and, and values. Uh, we rejected those values uh, because we I- embraced uh, hip-hop culture. Uh, prior to, to hip-hop culture, uh, I, I was born during the black exploitation era. So I was born in 1977. Uh, majority of the movies during the black exploitation era, we had Penitentiary One with Too Sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Superfly. We had The Mac. So so mo- mo- most of uh, the movies that we grew up watching was, was centered around uh, almost idolizing the streets yeah. in, in street culture. Uh, and at, at some point, uh, prostitution was no longer shamed. It looked upon as being shameful in the black community. Uh, pimps was elevated to, to the statue of preachers. Uh, killers was uh, elevated almost to the status of God mm-hmm. uh, in, in our communities. So we had Bill Cosby. Uh, we had Sanford and Son. Uh, but when rap music came, uh, those images uh, began to fade out in, in our communities because now we got drugs coming in. Uh, we got the elements of, of crack 
Uh, so all that played a part in, in how I grew up in, in, in deciding uh, what we wanted to become as young black boys mm -hmm. uh, in America. Yeah, we had Tony Dorsett. Uh, yeah, we had Walter Payton. But what about the kids who couldn't play football? What, what, what did we want them to be? The kids that could play basketball, they had Michael Jordan. Uh, they had Magic Johnson. Uh, they had Isaiah Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, what did the other kids have? Uh, they couldn't play sports. Uh, now you got the element of the gang culture is starting to spread throughout America. So Charleston is a kid that's a product of, of black American culture uh, infused with hip-hop music, uh, single-parent homes. Uh, and no father. Uh, I had uncles. I had male cousins. Uh, but I, I don't. I've never had any male discipline. Uh, I, I didn't play sports, so I've never had any male instructions. Uh, I'm mama and grandmama them baby. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a spoiled nigga, so yeah. I don't take well to groups of niggas. Uh, I only hung with groups of guys because I wanted to fit in. I, I wanted to be a part of something so I could solidify uh, what I thought what was manhood, which. Uh, when I look back as a as a man, uh, most of the things I was trying to solidify was boyhood. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't manhood because men don't group together right. if they ain't working together. Right. Uh, men don't join gangs. Boys do. No grown man joins a gang. Right. He don't wake up and say, man, I want to join. No, <laughs> that's some boy shit. Yeah. Uh, but, we, but we didn't know that. Uh, so my mother tried to uh, teach us uh, good morals and still good values. Uh, she was a religious slash spiritual woman, so she believed in Christ. She believed in the Bible, so we prayed at night. Uh, uh, and she was the backbone of the family. Uh, grandmother was a, uh, was a heroin addict, uh, 30, 40 years. My grandmother was born in, in the 40s, of not proud of the 30s because she's 83. Uh, my aunts uh, was the crack era. Mm -hmm. So my mother was the, the healer. She was the one that, that tried to keep everybody together. She was the one of uh, my aunt kids went to CPS, uh, to foster care. My mama was the one who went and adopted them to make sure that they weren't lost into the system. So her prayers is what glued everybody. Mm. I grew up wanting to go to prison. Uh, uh, Uncle Wayne been to prison. Uncle Curtis been to prison. Uncle Joe killed somebody. Uh, Jeffrey, Naki, all the males in my family had, had gone to prison, and, and we was aware of that as kids. Uh, when I spent the night over my homeboy houses, uh, uh, Googie, which was my homeboy's brother, he was in prison. Uh, his his daddy, Sambo, Sam was coming home from prison. Keenan was in and out of jail uh, going to prison. His cousin, Pritt, uh, when I cut on the television, uh, N.W.A. starting to come out. Mm -hmm. Niggas 11, 12, 13 years old. Uh, they're just now starting to put parental advisory labels on, on record, yeah. stickers on labels. But mama at work. So, shit, nigga, we, we sneaking Uncle Bootsy uh, tapes. And, nigga, we listening. We listening to all the, the at this time, homie, it was the first sound of gangsterism uh, that was coming through the airway. Because on the East Coast, homie, we had Big Daddy Kane, uh, 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 Eric B. and Rock M., they wasn't pushing gangsterism. Right. No. That that wasn't gangsterism. Yeah. Curtis Blow. That wasn't that that wasn't gang. Man, KRS that, One. KRS One. Uh, Poor Righteous Seasons. Poor yeah, Righteous it was a conscious move. Tribe Called Quest. Yes. Uh, it was yes. a balance. Yes. It, it was a balance to yes. what thinking of a master plan. Yes. So it, it was a balance. Yes. So the culture had balanced in. Yes. Uh, when it went to the East Coast, uh, it wasn't no balance. It it, it was all gangsters. So. Let's go. You, to the West Coast. Yes, sir. So, so you think when I'm 12 years old, homie, uh, we heard about strawberry. Nigga, we kids. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have no awareness of what a strawberry was. Yeah. We had never saw crack before. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I didn't first see crack until the D.A.R.E. program came about. Uh, but we had family members that was already on drugs. Uh, but we didn't have no awareness of it. Mm -hmm. Uh. So when we found out what a strawberry was, well, sh shoot, nigga, what, what you think we want to do? Get us $20, $30 and go get us a strawberry as little kids so we can find out what stra strawberry is the neighborhood whore. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the lady that's go, she may be in her mid-20s, still look good 
because crack had it hadn't started taking the it hadn't started deteriorating the looks of people. Yeah. So these women who first got hooked on it was kind of like what we see now. The, the young girls just popping the pills, it's on the mollies. They don't look drugged out yet. So when crack hit, uh, these were beauty queens. Yeah, these was niggas' mamas and aunties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these were beauty queens, homie. So here we are with, with kids with this knowledge that we shouldn't have, right? How to have sex with drug addicts. So this is our culture that we're dibbling and dabbling into. And so I, I, my mother wasn't at home. Man, it was years later before my mother would say, what is that y'all listening to? Mm-hmm. Boy, cut that mess off. Come here, what is that? It was years later before yeah. Yeah. grown-ups started saying, Love what is this? Saturated in your yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, man, I'm a product of the culture. Yeah. Who mama at home working, doing everything. My mom the moved us out the ghetto. Home, I, I wasn't raised in the projects. I didn't I didn't walk out on my porch and see drug addicts. Right. Oh, uh, I didn't walk out and see gangsters and gang members. That was all on television. Right. All in the music. What I started noticing is the difference between graduation parties. I think I was probably in the sixth or seventh grade when I noticed the difference between a, a, a graduation party and a welcome home prison party. Mm-hmm. Man, that welcome home prison party. Oh, I, yeah. I had one, boy. <laughs> Ooh. We, yeah, man. You get, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the graduation party is, ah. Uh, yeah. So you're young. With, see, this is what people forget. The young, impressionable mind of a child. Yes. Right. You can say something, do something to a kid. And it's there for a lifetime. Life. Yes, right. You ugly motherfucker. Yeah. And that kid feels ugly forever. Right. Yeah. Or you can make this kid feel beautiful for whatever you can make forever. Yeah. Right. So man, we sitting back looking at this shit, man. Nigga Uncle Wayne coming through with that motherfucking briefcase. You see, he opened the briefcase up. It's full of money. Mm-hmm. You see, he got out of Rolls Royce. Mm-hmm. He got all these pretty you high yellow. That ones. Ugly knot he pulled out. Yeah. His pocket. But. What you what what sticks in your mind is how the family treats him. Mm-hmm. How everybody bows to him and kisses his ass, and right. everybody. So you see this, right. so you even see when he goes ugly and beats women. Yeah, you see nobody treats him any differently. Yeah, so you think shit, nigga slapping bitches is all right. Nigga mm-hmm. Uncle Wayne did. Didn't nobody yeah. treat him differently. Mm-hmm. So you start indirectly. Um, I, I say this all the time, man. Uh, children. Mimic what they see and repeat what they hear. Mm-hmm. Just listen to kids talk. They go start repeating the shit they done heard. Mm-hmm. That's why when a kid is, is, is violated or molested, one of the main things they'll do is put this child in a room by, by, by themselves and allow them to play with dolls. At some point, a kid who's been touched or molested will start looking at the sexual parts of the doll. Mm. That's how they kind of figure it out because children are going to mimic the behavior. Right. A motherfucking kid that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old that can fight and hadn't been in boxing, you know he's getting beat on. Mm-hmm. A motherfucking kid that can take punches from another kid and still, come on, brain, that motherfucker getting hit on. Right. Mm-hmm. This is not normal behavior. Right. Right. He built up a tolerance. Yeah, so the young, impressionable mind, homie, so I, I started mimicking the culture so when I went to school, and, and and I can sing songs, Paula and Janet to make you wet in your pants, but to me, they just two more tramps with some good ass motherfucking pussy. And the teacher heard you, man, where the fuck that come from? Man, I'm singing a two short song. Right. I'm gonna get suspended from school. Yeah. Because I done said this vulgar language. When I go home, nobody's thinking, man, where did this little nigga get this from? I'm listening to the music. Well, other kids is not hearing this. Right. So it propels me to kind of be a leader amongst other kids because I can come mimic grown folks shit because my mother was always gone. She was gone to work. So that's the lack of parental supervision that the single mothers have to battle with. The single parent homes, the mother who have to go work. Kid is left behind without the parental supervision and he's exposed to the culture. Yeah. So at that time, uh, mama ain't got no pornog- pornographic books. We don't really get to see the porn books until we go to granddaddy's house or go over there with Uncle Joe. Mm-hmm. And we got to go look for them. Mm-hmm. Now, today, whatever a kid can think of that's at the front of this child's brain, if he can spell, he can type it in and see type it. it in. Yeah. So now he has way more access yeah, yeah. and exposure to shit compared to back. But I'm just mimicking the culture. That's what we got today. 
they mimicking this gangster culture that's all about killing. Mm. So there, there was there was a phase and stage to the gangsterism, right? It was full fledged gangsterism. So a lot of the videos back in that time, man, nigga were rapping from behind bars. Mm -hmm. Express yourself, nigga, yeah. nigga behind bar yeah. rapping. Yeah. Then you started seeing the chalk lines mm -hmm. in the 90s. You, the mid, you yeah. start seeing the chalk lines of niggas tape. didn't kill. Yeah. The yellow tape. They weren't killing yet. They walking us up to where we at now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They done walked us up. Nigga, we done walked up to this. Yeah. So ain't no more dancing rappers. Kid and play. Nigga, Big Daddy Kane was one of the most gangster niggas it was in a suit dancing with women around him. Yeah. And he never came off his soft. Right. You see what I'm saying? So ain't no more dancing niggas. And Public Enemy was considered hardcore rap. More militant then. because they were militant. And they was militant trying to teach the people. Yeah, and they were bucking. They were yeah. busting six systematic structures. Yeah. Uh uh they they had to divide Professor Griff and, and, and all of those guys. Yeah. Uh, they walked us up to this. Yeah. So I'm telling everybody, nigga, I'm the kid that started out before this shit got gangster. Mm -hmm. I remember the ha, the ha. Yeah. I remember that, homie. Uh, yeah. I don't, I'm the I'm the product yeah. of this yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I can Me play too. this role. That's yeah. how I can, nigga, I can play nigga. So uh, when we got New Jack City, when, when we got boys in the hood, homie, it shifted. Mm -hmm. it, it shifted. Mm-hmm. When we got minutes to society, mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was gone. It, it went up and f it pulled yeah. the gear down. Yeah. Because, nigga, the old dog image. The old dog was King Von before right. King Von. That's the birth of King Von before he can come along. Yep. The, the old dog image, nigga. So, nigga, every young nigga wanted to be old dog. Then you had the old niggas like Whack, who, the, the character that MCA mm -hmm. played yep. with the young niggas. Mm hmm and nigga, it's been out of control ever since. Mm. Uh, the streets used to have structure. Mm. And, 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 and a part of that structure was, homie, can't no kids come out here. You get your ass back in the house, nigga. Mm -hmm. So now since about 82, 83, it's been boys following boys, listening to mama. Mm. And all the men been gone. Yeah, That'll tell the nigga, nah, homie, that... That, that protected the Allen Ivers and said, nah, nigga, you ain't, uh-uh. Yeah. Them kind of guys was taken away. Only for niggas left behind to give kids dope sacks. Niggas mm -hmm. sitting in this trap. Uh, so that's why the young niggas today don't have no respect for no OG nigga. Because in their mind, nigga, ain't, no, ain't nobody ever told them nothing right. That's funny you say that. Uh, even bringing up Allen Ivers, and like one thing I would always tell him that, yo, you better than us. Like... You got an opportunity to do something that we don't. So you can't do what we want to do. And he wanted to do what we wanted to do. Yeah. And I just tell him, you can't do what we ain't, do. Ain't, ain't no more big homies like that no more. Yeah. And that uh, one, one of the liveest songs I, I, I ever heard made in, in the last 10 years was, was Yo Gotti's song, Big Homie Rules. Mm -hmm. You hardly ever hear anybody bumping that. But ain't no more big homies that say, nah, homie, uh, the nigga that took the case for Biggie in the movie. Yeah. In jail. Right. Ain't, yeah. ain't, ain't no more of that, homie. Yeah. You got a way out, nigga. Yeah. So yeah. why would I bring you in? Uh, uh, I got mad at my brother one time, homie. I used to take them niggas all kind of shit when he was in prison. And I used to foolishly do it. Him and my OG, them nigga could call me, nigga. I'd jump up on any Saturday and take them. And, and they'll let everybody in the prison know I'm coming. They everybody know I'm coming. <laughs> Say your brother coming down. They nigga, they really put me in the cross. Right. Yeah. You know no what I'm saying? But all yeah. they they in prison. They don't give a damn. They yeah. just want what they yeah. want. <laughs> yeah. I'm the foolish little brother. Yeah. Uh when I realized, nigga, they pulling me in there with them. Right. I mean, I quit seeing that nigga. I'm when I stopped seeing that nigga for about seven, eight years. <laughs> because I realized, nigga, yeah. they put why would they be pulling me Putting in? Putting you in that position, yeah. 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 Nigga, yeah. my why yeah, so uh Y'all got mad at them niggas, homie. All my prison partners. Nigga, I'm the nigga, so nigga, that's really what made me start fucking with the youth program. So when they get out, nigga, I'm pulling y'all out now. Right. I'm the nigga when y'all come home, I'm gonna make sure y'all don't go in, nigga. Fuck right. letting y'all pull me in. So it, it gotta be somebody like that out the crew, homie. Yeah. It gotta be at least yeah. one or two niggas like that yeah. out the crew. So yeah. where tell me, tell me, you know, because you we you know, we got this um persona on you know, social media of who people think Charleston White is. 
a lot of people don't hear this Charleston White. Yeah, no. Nah. But you know what I'm saying? This Charleston White right here is that that's your that's your foundation. That's where you came from. But in your in your words, what made the transition? What made you transition to what most people see and most people don't get a chance uh, to talk to right man, here? Man, man, these uh man, I'm in the community. See the game I got, I got from Washington, DC, from doing youth advocacy. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of niggas done kill a lot of people, but I never met nobody with life. Nigga, my brother got 99 years for killing a nigga at 17 years old. They gave him another 15 years on top of the 99 for a courtroom outburst. They ran a CC. He caught another seven years for beating a nigga in prison and putting him in a coma. I ain't never heard of life. And nigga, we down south. Right. They, the, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, one day I was sitting next to a, a young nigga that was 19, 20 years old, and he plea bargained for a life, but it was life with parole. I said, well, goddamn, man, what these niggas do to have to take a plea bargain for life? Because I don't yeah. think other than that is a death penalty. Yeah. yeah. So I said, damn, this young nigga took a plea bargain for life. So then I started coming to, to Washington, D.C., uh, working with, uh, I became a member of the campaign, campaign fair sentencing for youth. And then I I joined uh it, it it's a it's a it's a youth advocate organization it's called I Can Incarcerated Children Advocacy Network. Mm-hmm. Well, most of the people in I Can had juvenile life without parole. Mm-hmm. So that's my first time ever hearing about juvenile life life without parole. So I became uh, very active in trying to get that law abolished. That's when it changed. Mm-hmm. Nigga, I did seven years on a twelve year sentence for capital murder, uh, that I plea bargained for first degree murder. Uh, my brother got 99 years on a capital murder. Uh, all my niggas killed somebody uh, as kids. Uh, I did seven, but man, them niggas was transferred to the adult prison system. Mm-hmm. I did all mine in the boys' home, okay. and, and my record was sealed, so I don't have no felony convictions. Uh, but man, all my niggas did 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 years. Uh, for shit they did when they was 12, 13, 14 years old. Mm. The knowledge that, that I got in the juvenile system uh, e- equipped me to do the work uh, as far as youth advocacy, trying to change laws and legislations. Uh, it, it, it's much easier to create strong children. Uh, they, constra- they created a, a strong child to grow up to be what I am today, to become a law-abiding citizen. Uh, I don't commit crimes. Uh, I'm 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 very valuable to my community, uh, and I'm an asset to society. So, I was created in a juvenile system. Mm-hmm. Now here come my friends. We don't grew up. They're coming home as being broken men from prison. Mm-hmm. Prison didn't create a. They created a strong man in prison, but out here they're broken because they have to try to learn how to socialize, uh, not just with their family members, but when they get in relationships. Mm. Uh, uh, they got to find a new temperament uh, out here. They can't carry the same. So uh, it's a lot harder for them. And so what I found uh, that became their therapy and, and was therapeutic for, for their transition to reentry is coming back trying to create strong children, mm. giving the kids what we needed. They got what the kids need. Uh, they the ones in the village when, when, when they – they're the ones in the village who can reinforce what the parents are teaching in the home. That's right. They're the ones in the village who can redirect the kids when something is going on out in the village and the parents are at work or the police hadn't been called. These are the ones can redirect that because these are the ones that the rappers are really mimicking. And the children are mimicking the rappers. Exactly. So if we can... Put everybody in the category, and and that's what I came to try to do. So this, this is, I'm saying, homie, I grew up with kids who killed their mothers and their fathers. I wanted to be a killer. I ain't never killed nobody, but I participated in a murder. Mm. Uh, I wanted to be a pimp. Nigga, I pimp, but I, I wasn't no pimp at heart. I wanted to be a robber. I robbed and felt bad after every robbery, mm-hmm. but I robbed. Uh, I thought that's what made a nigga a real nigga. 
I thought that's what made, and I wanted to be a man. Yeah, mama, I heard what you're saying, but I'm looking at Uncle Wayne. I'm looking at Uncle Uncle Joe, a killer. Man, Uncle Curtis. Uh, man, I'm looking at all these other men who are propagating what our culture teaches us. Mm-hmm. Nigga, they ain't propagate no black banker to us. Yeah. They never made us tell us, nigga, we can be a doctor. Yeah. We can be Ben Carson. Ben Carson was just like us. A nigga with anger issues grew up and he almost stabbed his mama. Mm-hmm. That nigga turned out to be a brain surgeon. Mm-hmm. With the same anger, the same conditions, the same shit that every other nigga, nigga became a brain surgeon. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, when I grow up and I finally understand life, it says one and this is me understanding life. It says one in every three black male in America will go to prison or go or be on some form of community supervision in a lifetime. Yeah. Now just think about that. Yeah. One in every three will go. Yeah. What can we do? Nothing. How can we stop it? We can't. We can go to the any hospital, any maternity ward. And find three brand new black born babies. Say one, two, three. One of them babies going to prison. Mm-hmm. It ain't nothing we can do because those are the statistics that they're telling us. It's set up for that. Yeah, It's set up for it. Yeah. So what can we do? Nigga, we got to equip them. We got to give, we got to equip them so they can overcome that journey. So they can make it through whatever they got to make it through because we can't stop it. That's what we're doing on the ground. You just broke down our whole organization, Catch sure. More Kids. Our, our slogan is to catch more kids than the streets, catch more kids than the prison, catch more kids than the police. And that's what I be telling them. Our kids need hands-on supervision. Yeah. So we on the ground because who better than guys like us? We got the scars to prove. Yeah, man. If a kid hungry, they supposed to, be able to call somebody and say, man, I'm hungry right now. And I'm finna go steal. Some. No, hold up. They don't go steal nothing. Exactly. Here go $30. Here go $20. Go buy something for the household. You sit in the car. You stand at the door and let that kid go buy what they need for the household. Mm-hmm. That's how you engage him. Mm-hmm. Don't you go buy them nothing. You don't know what they like. Man, go buy what y'all want for the household. Mm-hmm. Man, I done seen kids go get milk for their little brother. I done seen kids grab pampers. Man, why you grabbing them cereal, man? My stepdad ate the cereal up this morning. And that'll tell you this story. Come on now. You can you can read the story from that. Come on. Man, I, I challenge everybody to do to do what I call a, a, a financial literacy male mentoring program. Go buy, just go go to a local project, a local hood, and get 10 or 15 wallets. And go find 10 or 15 kids, put $20 in each wallet, and get them little niggas that wallet, and say, say, man, meet me back here in a week or two weeks. Whatever you save out this 20, I'm going to match it. Whatever you save out this 20, I'm going to match it, nigga. We're going to spend an hour together kicking it, talking, eating. Mm-hmm. When it's time to part away, how much you save out that 20? Mr. Charles, and I say $18. Here go $18. I like that. Mr. Charles, and I didn't say nothing. Man, what, what you mean you ain't say nothing? You done bought some weed? No, man. I, I, what you buy? Some chips? What? I was hungry. Ah, uh, okay. It tells the story. Come on, nigga. So look, here we go, do. Go on, go get some groceries for the house. We go start over. We go start over. The idea and, and the concept here: every man got to have a wallet for one. Mm-hmm. Every man got to have a wallet for what? Nigga, your ID. Because by law, you got to have ID. That's what go keep you legal. Mm-hmm. That ID, nigga, that driving license. What you want, put your card in there and put that at least 50 in that wallet. Nigga, you ain't got to spend it. Put the rest of the cab, but nigga, put 50 in that wallet for emergency. Mm-hmm. The concept is you go build a bond with him, just tr- give him some game. But you really dangling that money out there to, mm-hmm. to catch and come before the hanging. Because yeah. at the end of the day, this is what they stealing for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is what they robbing for. Mm-hmm. And if you can show them how to get this, they'll put them guns down. Mm-hmm. So the concept, catch a kid, homie, that's what made me create this character and come to the Internet. Uh, uh, it, It's come to the Internet because I understood going in the juvenile system was cool. That's intervention. Mm-hmm. Uh, But, man, we got to focus more on preventative prevention. measures. That's right. And that's where y'all come in that's at. That's what we doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I, sure. I heard you speak on the character. Like I saw uh, 
when you spoke on Nipsey Hussle and you was trying to explain, you know, uh, about assassinate characters. Yeah. You know, and everybody, you know, they they got they got they they just saw the Nipsey in the past and then they got stuck right there. Yeah. They didn't see the underlying message of Herbis. what you was trying to say. Yeah. I got introduced to the man at the funeral. Yeah. I got introduced to the man at the funeral. And and, and I noticed most people was there for Nipsey Hustle. And I noticed how they celebrated every time his song came on. And, and 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 everybody says long live Nip, but uh, the family is mourning and, and missing ear miss. Mm. Uh, when that seven year old kid got up and said last night, ear miss came to me in a dream, and he was in heaven, and he said, "What's up, killer?" He called me killer. I said, "Man, this kid had a conversation with ear miss." How can he make this up? Mm. How can he detail this to the world? It's thousands in here, man. It's thousands in this state. But how can it, who gave this kid this script? Uh, I put my blunt out, and I tuned in because I, I always thought that God spoke through children and, and elders. Mm. He said he was in heaven. I I, I noticed after the death, uh, the family never long lived nip. They always speak of earmiss. Uh, the country, the the, the country that he's he, he's uh-huh. from, they honor Earmus. We still got Nip because we can play his music, right? But the spirit of Earmus, homie, where is it? It's gone. The marathon didn't continue hmm. because we stuck on Nip, and, and we haven't highlighted the heart of who Earmus was to be able to do what he did for his community, only to lose his life by the hand. So. Uh, it's easy for me to say fuck the character and, and, and embrace the man. Uh, same with King Von. But when I say King Von and I look at the man, uh, where are his friends? Where is the family that can come and tell us, well, contrary to what's said on paper, this is the kind of kid he was. This is how he grew up. Give us a backstory to him. Humanize this man. Mm-hmm. Humanize him. Don't, don't, don't. Don't idolize the character. Humanize this man. Mm. Uh, and, and I challenge all rappers to come out of character, homie. They used to come out of character. We used to have platforms where they sit on the couch with Fab Five Freddy, homie, and Fab Five Freddy interview him on yo, mm. and yeah, we get yeah. the man. Yeah. yeah. They used to go sit on the couch in the basement with Big Tigger. We get the man. 106 and pop. Come on, we used to get the man. Yeah. We don't Now we got all characters, homie. Yeah. We got all characters. So... Uh, our people, uh, Ali, the people got to touch Ali the man. Uh, the people used to get to see these individuals as our, as our brothers and sisters and, 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 and not like many gods. And, and they've become like many gods to our children. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't come into the schools where our kids can see them and touch them. Uh, everything is propagated, a uh, detriment and, 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 and negative. And I'm saying if y'all come out of character, y'all can explain what's really going on to us. So I see a, 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 I see like from uh, Martin Luther King, uh, he tried to expose the uh, what well, he did expose the immorality of this country with the nonviolence movement. Yeah, he was killed. I saw uh, Malcolm 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 X call him out by any means. Um, now in our era, our generation, you know. You're taking the bold stance to call these rappers out, to call them back to what hip hop was founded on, to expose. They killed Tupac. Exactly. They killed Tupac, homie. Let let me just say this, uh, because I gotta wrap it up. But I'm gonna come back. We're gonna do stream yards uh, and everything. So I'm I'm gonna we're gonna do more. Uh, But homie, they killed Pac. They didn't just kill Nip. Mm -hmm. So so what what do you mean by they killed Pac? Homie, Pac got involved with some real gangsters. Mm-hmm. Them MOB niggas, them mob men, them were some real motherfucking gangsters. Them niggas even killed each other. Uh, homie, Pac wasn't supposed to be caught up over there. If he was, they were supposed to protect him. They whispered in that nigga ear, there he go. They let him take off running. Mm-hmm. That nigga Orlando, that nigga Pac kicked, that nigga was a real killer and a real gangster. They weren't supposed to let Pac do that. Homie, mm-hmm. Pac wasn't no gangster. Mm-hmm. I thought he was. 
I thought he was. Yeah. Homie, it's all right, man. I I was the kid that wanted to be a gangster that would have got my life took because I really wasn't it, but I would I had went I would go to the same list that a nigga who had hate in his heart would. Mm -hmm. And they could see it. Mm -hmm. They could see it, homie. A nigga that come from hate that really got in his heart to kill, they know you ain't that kind of person, homie. But you'll get mixed up with them kind of people. Yeah. So when you hear these niggas telling the stories about Pac, they really kind of shitting on him. They really kind of shitting on him. Mm. If, if you listen. Mm. Because he didn't belong. M.O.B., mm. he started hollering it. Mm -hmm. He started hollering it, homie. And, and, and I understand, nigga, I was pretending the whole time. I was pretending the whole time, my nigga. So when you, none of that in my heart. So when you, I, I mean, mm. so when you got this character, right, the character that you got now, the character that you got online, the way we having this conversation right here, the way we met you, the way yeah. I personally seen people receive you, you know what I'm saying? I've been to a couple of spots within the last couple of months, you know, doing different things in clubs. And, and both times it's, it's, it's been altercations and there's been fights. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. All of this persona about you online, all the things you say, all the things people say about you. But I seen you walk in the club last night, and ain't nobody give you number love. Yeah, nobody uh, gave you number love. I, I'm I'm pretending online, homie. Uh, I ain't as mean as I am, nigga. I don't want to rape. I don't want. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to rape no yeah. white people. Nigga. Yeah, I don't, don't, don't want to kill no white. <laughs> nigga, I'm just. Uh, I'm I'm pretending online, just like everybody else is. Right. Um. Mm. Uh, you're showing on the mirror effect. That's all, man. And, and, and I, I didn't want to blow my cover, but my love for black people, I had to come out and say, man, y'all, this ain't me. I'm really playing. Right. But I realize I'm playing it so well, people are stuck on it. Mm -hmm. uh, or do you believe people want to believe that more they than, do. than yeah, the other? They do. Yeah, you they see they what do. I'm saying? People yeah, want to believe that yeah. you that. Because yeah. what the, the, the alternative is that... What you what you really is and what you really trying to do, if they want to believe that, then they got to get involved. Yeah. See, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth because the truth comes with work. You know what I'm saying? You want to join this. You want to help me try to get these kids. You know, a lot of people don't want to accept the truth because the truth comes with work. Well, well, this is why. Well, this is why I say. This is why I can say, man, fuck George Floyd, and don't look at the video, because if I don't say fuck it, and I go watch this video. And I feel what everybody else feel. I'm the kind of person I'm gonna act on my convictions. I'm gonna nigga, man, let me get mad, homie. I'm gonna go get my guns and we gonna be ready to go to war with the police. And that's the dumbest thing in the world to right. do. I done been there. Yeah. So most of the things I can't look, homie, because as a man, my convictions go make me stand up knowing I can't whoop this nigga. Right. And say, nah, homie, that's wrong. Don't nah, you wrong for that. I know I but even in jail, homie, my right. convictions will make me say, nah, homie, we wrong. They wrong. This ain't for the... And it'll put me in danger. Right. That's what's happening now. These are my convictions. Right. So it's certain things I cannot give my time and my because my convictions will make me say, man, y'all, let's, let's sound the horn. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, man, fuck this shit and stay focused on helping kids because this is where my spirit at. Right. This is where my spirit will stay good at. Mm -hmm. Man, if I go over here with these mamas and these mamas crying, every day I'm going to be saying, nigga, fuck you, old gang banging ass nigga. Nigga, fuck you. And those are my convictions. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Because I'm crying with the mama on the inside. Right. I'm crying with my people, nigga, when I see this. And I'm saying, nigga, ain't nobody ready to throw their life away? Yeah. Okay, then. That's smart. Now, homie, we can, we can stop it if we do it like this, girl. Mm -hmm. So let's take the emotions out of what we see and how we feel about de being done wrong. Nigga, we got to think our way through. That's for sure. We got to think our way through yeah, this shit, Yeah, that's a nigga. fact. That's a fact. There's a lot of dudes, including myself, that, that stayed in prison even longer than we should have until we started thinking. Come on. You man, had to man. start thinking your way out, man. And and, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm a product of that because, you know, you get so caught up in doing time and surviving that you you, you get caught up in the life that, well, I got to survive. But then you will have dudes come in there like other races and other people and they get all this extra amount of time and you see them in the law library, law library. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, their sentence got vacated, yeah. their sentence got... And I, you know, and it, and it dawned on me. When I started seeing dudes go and go and go like the last four or five years of my bit. Man, I stopped working out every day. I stopped doing this. I was going to the library. And within three years of me doing that, being proactive and trying to get my own freedom, I, I made parole. But this after 33 years. So you talking mm. about 30 years, 
I was stuck up on trying to survive instead of trying to get up out and, of prison. And, 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 and I, I got to go because I got to catch a for flight. Sure, but for I, sure. I, this is what I want to end. I mean, part of what they teach us in, in, in working with children uh, is that when a child has to go in survival mode, the brain shuts down and they become like an animal. They're no yeah. longer analytic thinking. Yeah, absolutely. When you have to go in survival mode, you are no longer thinking. Yeah, right. You own nature. You own survival. Yeah. Right. And, and, and until you yeah. come, you instinctive, right? So until you can come out of whatever conditions, whatever circumstances, or whatever environment got you in survival mode, man, you will never be able to tap into the thinking abilities of your brain. Because sure. you got to survive. Absolutely. And, man, these babies have got to survive. Sure. They don't know what they go wow. eat when they get out of school. How they yeah. go think to make rational, logical exactly. decisions when they in survival mode? Right. And that's what I'm teaching in my joint, the think tank. Come and on, on that, man, we're going to close. I know you got to catch a plane. We're going to do this Are again. we coming back? Yeah. For sure, yeah, man. Y'all yeah, coming, coming down. to you. Yeah, 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 yeah we coming, coming to, to you. Yeah, most definitely. We're going to do this again. We appreciate you coming, man. You know, uh... You was like push, man. One word, and, and you you kept your words. So, man, Solid living life after the life, man. Charleston White, man. Y'all check it out. Listen to it. Troy Catchmore. I am Troy Catchmore. Banky Pound, Banky man. Banky Pound TVP, Appreciate man. Charleston you, bro. White came through, man. Did his thing, man. Yes, sir. Hey, look, and uh, and Dewberry in the Dewberry building, Dewberry. man. <laughs> hey, look, laundry, man. And, 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 <laughs> hey, look, and everybody out there, man. Hey, <laughs> hey, get, hey, get, hey, get the real Charleston White. The same energy you get the character, man. Y'all Let's get to take it. Take a tap into yeah. the man, yeah, man. Look real, at the man, man. man. Let's we, listen to this. We met the real man. man. We met the real man, we man. So y'all tap into it. We coming out there to you, homie. Appreciate you. Appreciate all your people, man. Yeah, nice to meet y'all for sure Dewberry we got something coming to man. man the laundry <laughs> man, man. man. Say, say 18 years old the laundry man, man. Old. Hey. Hundred percent way to survive jail or prison. Don't go. You credit up. Why you need credit? Then twelve years goes by and you don't even get a chance to go up for parole. Supposed to die so many times. Guess that's my afterlife. A lot of shit ain't work for me.